it's been a while since we've had this class, or at least it feels like it's been a while since we've had this class. We're in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, and hopefully we're going to wind this chapter up tonight. Uh, if you do not have notes, raise your hand, and uh, someone will get these to you, okay? Um, raise your hand. I, uh, if you left them at home, or if you just don't have them, never got them, uh, burned them, threw them away, whatever you did with them... Um, <clears throat> I think I made about 35 copies. I, uh, I knew we hadn't been here in a while, and so I uh, wanted everyone to have a copy if they could. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. In this particular chapter, the Apostle Paul is dealing with the Christian rest. Okay, uh, Let me ask you this. Had the Jews received any kind of rest during their history? Okay. Okay, yes. Number one, they had been given the Sabbath day, had they not? And that was every, every week. That was a day of rest for the Jews. And uh, was that a very important day for the Jew? Very important day. Guys, they took that day very, very seriously. In fact, it's part of the Ten Commandments, is it not? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. What's that word holy mean? Yeah, to keep it separate, to keep it distinct, to keep it consecrated unto God. You don't use that for your benefit. You don't use that for your purposes. That day is God's day, and it's set apart, and it's a day of rest. Not only were the uh, Jews to rest, but also their animals were to rest on that day as well. So we have the Sabbath rest. Were they given any other rest? Okay, yeah, all these, those apply to the Sabbath. We could keep tying things to the Sabbath. But there's another huge rest that they had received. Yeah, guys, the land of Canaan was their land of rest. And it was given to them by Joshua. They had wandered 40 years in the wilderness as punishment. And they finally received the land of Canaan as their rest. It was now their land. And now they could be in that land, own that land, occupy that land, and develop a kingdom there. So that was a rest for the Jews. But throughout the history of the Jews, there was always another rest that was constantly being forecast. And it was a rest to which individuals always were looking. Folks, that's the Christian's rest. Okay, Do we have the Sabbath day today that we honor? No. The Sabbath day has been done away. Okay, The Sabbath day uh, is not found within the pages of the New Testament. So uh, on the Seventh day, Saturday, we just go about our normal activities, do we not? Uh, today, it is the Lord's Day that is the consecrated day of worship, isn't it? And it's not really declared a day of rest like the Old Testament was considered. It is referred to as the Lord's Day. It is the day upon which the early church assembled, Acts 20, verse 7, 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2. But it is not the Christian Sabbath, folks. Anybody who calls Sunday the Christian Sabbath, that is a misnomer, isn't it? That means the Christian's sixth day is the first day that doesn't even make sense. Okay, so we don't, we don't honor the Sabbath day. It's not a part of, um, you know, our um, religious practice. Um, are we even concerned today about Canaan? No. Folks, we're not concerned about Canaan. Okay, now I realize the premillennialists are caught up in the land of Canaan, aren't they? Because they still look upon the Jews as God's chosen people, and yet that's not the case anymore. Who are God's chosen today? The church. Christians are God's chosen people today. We are the peculiar treasure, aren't we? We are the individuals who God has called out of the world into His kingdom, and this kingdom is no longer a... Physical kingdom, is it? Folks, the Jewish kingdom was a physical kingdom. It was, it was both a government and a religion, wasn't it? And that's not so with the new covenant. Okay, It doesn't involve an earthly kingdom today. The only kingdom that we are concerned about is a spiritual kingdom. Jesus said, my kingdom is 
not of this world. Okay? So we're not concerned about a physical kingdom. We're concerned about the church, the spiritual kingdom of the Almighty God. And we are members of that kingdom, are we not? And, uh, but do we have a rest to which we are looking? Oh, yes. It's not the Sabbath day rest. It's not the Canaan rest. It's another rest. And that's the rest that uh, the Hebrew writer is talking about in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And he says this, There remaineth therefore a rest for the people of God. Okay? Even though we don't have a Sabbath, and even though we're not concerned about the promised land of Canaan, we still have a what? A rest, don't we? And uh, in this section, that's what we've been talking about uh, for the last several weeks. Uh, we began noticing that rest involves fear. What does that mean? All respect, honor for the Almighty God. Folks, no one will enter into God's rest unless they fear Him. Okay? Unless they fear Him. That's what verse 1 says. He says this, There is, I mean, uh, there, let us therefore fear. And that's the way he begins this particular section. So rest involves fear. We notice also, rest involves a promise. Okay? A promise. What do we mean by a promise? What's a promise? I'm just reviewing here to catch us back up. What is it? What's a promise? Is it something you have right now? No. It's not something we have now. It's something to which we look, isn't it? That's what a promise is. And uh, right now, we don't have eternal life, do we? Now, I realize that many of our denominational friends say that we do, don't they? But we don't have eternal life right now. We're in hope of eternal life. We have promise of eternal life. It is something which is to come, isn't it? So our rest is something which is promised to us. It's still future tense. Thirdly, we noted that it is God's rest. What do we mean by that? It is God's rest. It's what? Okay, it's been given by God. Guys, the place has been designed by Him, and He is the one who will be the one who ultimately gives it to us, isn't it? Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Okay? When do we hear those words? In the last day, don't we? If we've been found faithful, that's what we'll be given at that particular time. So God will give it. Uh, notice also, we noted that a person can fall from that rest, can he not? Okay? You see, if I don't fear, and if I don't stay faithful, and if I'm not dedicated, and if I don't live the kind of life that God wants me to live, guys, I can fall from that rest, can I? Yes, sir. Um, I guess, I, guess I, I, I don't know what you're... Yes. Only because of what happens at resurrection. Right now, we are not immortal beings. We're mortal beings. And we will what? Die. Now the soul, on the other hand, is what? Our soul is immortal because our soul continues to live, doesn't it? Our soul, however, is not what? Eternal because it had a what? It had a beginning. Okay? Uh, but there's coming a day, and we talked about this Sunday, didn't we? That our spirit, which lives after death will be reunited with our body. All that are in the grave shall hear His voice and shall come forth. But it's going to be changed into a what? An eternal body. Remember Paul said there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Okay? And the body that we'll get at the resurrection will be that spiritual body. That body will live what? Forever. Okay? Whether that body goes to condemnation, okay, or whether that body goes to 
eternal life. That body will live on and on and on and on, won't it? Okay, and uh, if we go to eternal life, that's the rest that uh, the writer is talking about at this particular point. Notice Hebrews 4 verse 6, okay? Um, he says this, The rest remains to be entered into. Seeing therefore it remaineth, that some must enter therein. Okay? Guys, we haven't reached our rest yet. Okay? Notice verse 9. There remaineth therefore a rest for the people of God. Even though there's been all of these rests in the past, so what? The, guys, those rests don't even begin to compare to what? to the rest that you and I have been promised, okay? Now, all of those rests are typical, aren't they? All of those rests have some things within them that are similar to the rests that we're going to be given, but they are not the rest of the Christian, okay? Turn over to Matthew verse 11. I mean, Matthew chapter 11, I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 11. We all know this verse well. Somebody read verse 28. Matthew 11, verse 28. Come unto, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Ah, and I will give you rest. Now, that verse could involve rest now from what? I will give you rest from your sins, from your burdens, from your transgressions. You can put those off. They can be forgiven. And you receive that kind of rest. But folks, Jesus is also looking where? He's looking into the future. I will give you rest, eternal rest. Turn to another passage, interesting passage, 2 Thessalonians 1. Somebody begin reading at verse 6, and I'll stop you uh, sometime in verse 7, okay? <clears throat> Stop. Now, the reason that I kept the verse together is because there's a verse break, isn't there? Okay, we have verse what? We have verse, we begin in verse 6, and then it goes into verse what? 7. And the verse, if we just um, stop at verse 6 and read it, and then go into verse 7, we really don't get the thought. Okay? Because the thought is all one right here. Okay? Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. You see, God recompenses trouble to those who trouble Christians. And God recompenses rest to Christians who are troubled. You see what he's talking about? There's even a play on words in Paul's talk in this particular text. And Paul says, there's coming a day when God will recompense tribulation to those that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, the Christians who are being persecuted, he's going to recompense what? Rest to you. Folks, Paul is looking down the quarters of time and desiring that rest which is to come. He knows that there's a future rest. He knows that there's a time when we put down these burdens and these hardships and the difficulties of life. And we no longer have to struggle. And we get what? We get rest. Okay? Turn to another passage. Revelation. Somebody read chapter 14, verse 13. This is another one we're well aware of. Ah, do you hear that? Boy, you see, blessed are the who? Blessed are the dead who die where? In the Lord. Guys, that tells me you can die what? Out of the Lord. Okay, who's in the Lord? Yes, those individuals who've been baptized into Christ. Turn over to Romans chapter 6. Somebody read verses, verse 3 for me. Romans 6 verse 3. Ah, hear that? Know ye not 
And so many of us, as we're baptized into Jesus, we're baptized what? Into His death. Folks, you are baptized into Christ. Somebody turn over to Galatians chapter 3. Read 26 and 27. Folks, these are the only two passages in all of Scripture that tell us how to get into Jesus. Okay? Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Who's got it? Folks, those are the only two passages that tell us how to get into Christ. Okay? And the Bible says that we get into Christ by being what? Baptized into Him. Now watch what, watch what the writer of Revelation says again. Blessed are the dead who have died where? In the Lord. Now the only way to be in the Lord is to be baptized into Him. Okay? Now what happens? Why are they blessed? That they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Folks, that's part of the blessing of being where? In the Lord. Okay? We get rest. We get to put off these, the labor and the travail of this world. But only to those that what? Die in the Lord. Turn to another passage in Revelation. Revelation 14, verse 11. Somebody read that one. Here's a contrast. Wow. Guys, in the Revelation, there's two groups of individuals. Okay? There are those who side with the Christ, and there are those who side with Satan. Okay? There are those who side with Jesus, and there are those who side with the beast. Okay? Um, and notice the ones who side with the beast, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have what? No rest. Day nor night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Guys, if you side with the beast, if you don't side with the Christ, if you don't live for the Christ, guess what? Your end will find there is no rest there. Where do you wind up? Folks, you wind up in the torments of hell, don't you? And guys, there you're in anguish every moment throughout all eternity. There is no rest. There's no mental rest. There's no physical rest. What did the rich man say when he entered into just the Hadean realm and that place called torments? What did he scream out? I am tormented in this flame. Guys, how would you like to live with that? Forever and ever? We don't have to. You see, you can rest. Gil, did you have something? Okay. <laughs> if you're there, <laughs> if you're there, you will, you know. Uh, and, I, and I don't mean that, you know. I hope I don't hear anybody screaming, you know. What? Uh, to be honest with you, I know this. I know that in, in uh, the Hadean realm. Um, did, did, the, did the screams of torment bother Lazarus whatsoever? No, the Bible says he is comforted and thou art what? Tormented. Okay? And guys, we, there's only two options for us, isn't there? There's torment, there's anguish, there's tribulation, there's wrath, or there's rest, isn't there? You know? And I don't know about you, I want the what? I want the rest. Okay? And, and if... if if it's the dead who die in the Lord that receive that rest, then guess what? I want to know how to get into the Lord. Don't you? And that's the key. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that, that's been a question that's asked a lot, isn't it? Okay, let me ask you something. Does anybody in here have relatives who, who are lost and you know they're lost? You know that right now? Does that, does that totally destroy your happiness here? 
Isn't that amazing? Even in this earth, you can be happy knowing that people are what? Lost. Okay? And so, um, you know, as far as how we deal with that in the hereafter, all I know is this. Guys, you're going to be in a place of total peace, total comfort. You don't worry about anything. Okay? Because the judge of the earth does right. Always, doesn't he? Whatever his judgment is, he did right. And uh, now, now I'm, you know, I'm holy, and, and I'm apart from this world, right? And uh, all that will no longer bother us, okay? That, that won't even be on our mind, okay, uh, those individuals. It's interesting that those who die in the Lord, their works follow them. Mm -hmm. So there's some works involved in being in the Lord. Well, the, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute, okay? But not works there, because then we rest from our labors, don't we? Okay, uh, Gil? Yeah, but there's, there's a point, even, even right now, when, when we know that a person is dead, right? Okay. Remember what the prodigal son's father said? This my son was dead. Folks, I know there's some people right now that are dead, right? They're out of Christ. They're dead. They're unfaithful. They're lost in a lost condition. They don't repent and change. And yet I can still be joyful and happy and content in this world, but well, if I can do that here, and my whole point was, I can do that where? In heaven too, okay? When things are a whole lot different than they are even here, right? And so uh, somehow God takes care of that, okay? Right. Yes, we'll know it, but, but it'll be a righteous judgment that will have convicted them, okay? The, the main point is what? Don't go there. Right? Folks, don't miss the... And that's the whole point of this, this right here, isn't it? Guess what happened to a whole generation of the children of Israel? They lost their rest. Their carcasses fell in the wilderness. And they did not enter into the land of Canaan. Folks, that same thing can happen to us. Lest any of you seem to fall short of it. You can fall short. You cannot make it, okay? And we have to make certain that we make it. Notice point number seven. It's found in verse 10. Rest involves a ceasing from labor. For he that entereth into his rest, he also hath ceased from his works as God did from his. Wow. He takes us all the way back to where? All the way back to the beginning. And on that seventh day, God what? Rested. Okay? He quit working. And he says, just like God quit working way back there, guess what's going to happen to you when you finally get your Christian rest? You get to cease from your labors. That little word cease is interesting. To settle down. To cause to desist. Thayer says that it means this, to make quiet. To cause to be at ease. To grant rest. To lead into a quiet abode. To steal to restrain, to cause one striving to do something, to desist, to rest, to take rest. What are some of the things in this life that bring us a lot of tribulation and struggle and trial? Okay, yeah. Just day-to-day -day living is difficult at times, is it not? Okay, now it's not nearly as difficult as it was in the first century as a Christian, I'll guarantee you that, okay? We don't know how good we have it. We cry and we whine and we act like we're, we're just got, got it so bad. Guys, go back and live in the first century and become a Christian in the first century and see how you're treated, okay? But yes, we have those daily struggles. Anything else? And you know, most of us, that, that's really not that big of a deal, is it? You know, I realize some, of, some folks live paycheck to paycheck, but you know, most of us don't worry about, am I going to have money for food tomorrow? Or am I going to be able to pay the light bill tomorrow? Now, some people do, but most of us don't, do we? I don't worry about it. You know, I'm, I'm going to pay my bills as long as I got a job, you know, as long as I got my retirement money, whatever you got, right? 
You don't, you don't even think about that too much. So for most of us, that's, that's a very minor struggle, isn't it? What do we struggle with then? Okay, health issues. Okay, that's one. And many individuals in this congregation are reaching that point or have reached that point in their life where they're struggling with that almost on a daily basis, isn't it? Okay, uh, there's that struggle. Uh, Debbie made mention of sin. You know, guys, every day we're tempted, are we not? And every day we find ourselves in situations that we have to make choices as to how we're going to respond or not respond. And you, you always respond perfectly, don't you? I had some honest ones say no, okay, because we don't. We don't always do the right thing, say the right thing, act the right way. We just don't do that every time. And, and there, there's times we look back on like, oh man, I, you know, I shouldn't have done that, okay? So we struggle with sin. Um, what were they struggling with in the first century here? What was, what was one of their biggest problems? Persecution. Persecution. That's the biggie right now. And yet, it's not even uh, one that they're yet um, resisting to blood, according to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. But their families and the situation in which they are find themselves, uh, their, their culture, their, their old religion, the Jews, man, guys, they are putting major pressure on these individuals. And it's every day, okay? How would you like to have a line of work that's tied to one of the gods of the Greeks? Okay, maybe, maybe you're a craftsman, right? Okay, maybe, you're, maybe let's just say you're a, uh, uh, a jeweler. And the jeweler, his occupation is tied to one of the Greek gods. Okay? So a part of your income always goes where? to the Greek gods. Now you've become a Christian. And you have to go and you have to tell your employer, guess what? I'm a Christian now. You know what's going to be the first thing that happens? It's not even going to be involved whether you pay your God or not. It's going to be what? You don't have a job. You can't be loyal to God and the Greek God at the same time. And so you know I lose my job. Now my livelihood's gone. Now I've got children, four, five, six, ten children. What am I going to do? Right? And every Greek occupation was tied to what? A Greek God. So you start your own occupation, and guess what? Everybody finds out you're a Christian. They don't want anything to do with you. Folks, those are, those are burdens, right? Um, Jews were disinherited. Jews were treated badly. They were called names by their family. All kinds of stuff. And, you know, that burden every day gets to be pretty heavy, doesn't it? And that's why these Jews were beginning to go back to Judaism. Okay? And uh, what the writer's telling them is, look guys, if you do that, if you go back, guess what you're going to lose? You're going to lose your rest. One of these days, all of these persecutions, all of this pressure that these people are putting on, all of that's going to be what? Gone. And you can cease from your labor. Wow. Guys, that's what we have to constantly what? That's what we constantly have to look to. Okay? We've got to look to our rest. You know? I, I've often made this statement. Why does a Christian live? To die. That's why you live. You know? I live to die. I don't live to live. If, if, if I, the reason I live right now is to what? Honor Christ. But I live that way so that I can what? Die in the Lord. And if you die that way, pff, you got nothing to worry about. You know that? Boy, don't you wish we could think like that? Because <laughs> we don't think like that. We think like what? I just want to what? I just want to live. No. No, Paul says what? For me to die is Christ. For me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. Paul, guys, Paul was looking toward the what? To the end. He even told the Philippians, it's better for me to depart and be with Christ, but it's better for you if I what? If I stay. Oh, you. <laughs> you keep me here. But it's better for me to what? To depart. Okay, guys, we're living to die. 
Okay, that, that's why we're living. Because this old world sure ain't home. I hope it isn't. We sing that song, don't we? This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Okay? And it doesn't mean we're living to, you know, uh, intentionally die, are we? But death is the end. Okay? Notice that he says that our rest involves a cessation from labors. But guys, you know what that implies? That implies that right now, we're supposed to be what? Working. Okay? Working. And there's numerous passages of Scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Now guys, if you think worship is work, then we got problems. You know that? Worship ain't even, that ain't even touch the hem of the garment on Christian work. You know? But that, that seems to be, for some individuals, the extent of their what? The extent of their work. Doesn't it? Notice what Paul writes in Philippians 2 verse 10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Titus 2 verse 14 who gave Himself for us, that He might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto Himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. What's that word zealous mean? How do you define it? Excited? That's a good word. Anything else? Enthusiastic? Does anybody know what the, the, the picture of it is for, for, the, Greek, for the Greek mind when, when they heard the Greek word? Have you ever put a, a, a pot on the stove and all of a sudden you, you hear, you go, and you turn around, it's just boiling over? And you're going, oh man! Guys, that boiling over stuff, there's the picture of good works for the Christian. Okay? God put a little water in you, turn the heat on, and guess what He wants it to do? He wants it to boil over. That's what the Christian is supposed to be doing. Okay? People are always saying, I can never work enough. You're right, you can't. There's no way, folks. You can never pay for your salvation. It's an impossibility. Okay, but guess what? you got to work. See, when the Lord comes back, it's not a matter... God, God didn't come back and He doesn't look at you. Oh, is He working enough? That's not what He's coming back for. You know what He's coming back for? Is He working? You see, the Lord's coming back for those who are doing that, that's what he wants to He wants to find people doing. The bad thing is, when we quit what? When we quit doing. Okay? When we quit doing. And that's what we don't need to do. Okay? Uh, notice po the last point down there. If we labor here, we get rest there. In Luke 16, 25, we get a slight picture of this rest. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise lives of evil things. But now he is comforted but thou art tormented folks we must labor to enter into the rest Hebrews 4 verse 11 let us therefore labor to enter into this rest notice what Barnes said heaven is never obtained but by diligence no one enters there who does not earnestly desire it and who does not make a sincere effort to reach it I'm not, I'm not working to be saved That's, that's not my mindset, but I am working because what? I am saved. And I want to be saved in the last day, don't I? And folks, those works are very, very important. Notice what Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And I stopped there, but the very next word says this, henceforth. What's that word mean? Henceforth. There is laid up for me. Because of what I've done, those three things, fought a good fight, finished my course, kept the faith. Henceforth, based upon that, there is laid up for me a what? A crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Guys, the question that we have to ask ourselves is this. Are we fighting the good fight? Are we running the Christian race? 
are we fighting the good fight every day? Right? And if you are, guess what? There remains a rest for the people of God. Notice that note down at the very bottom. We do enter into rest through faith, but not by faith only. There must be labor attached to it. Guys, we are on this side of rest. And guess what? We can still enter in, can't we? We can still enter in. And I got the very last sentence down there. Only the ignorant or the foolish would refrain from entering into his rest. Ignorant or foolish. One of the two. Questions, comments? Guess what? We just finished chapter who? Can you believe it? Man. Chapter 5. Starting next week. That's a good one too. Thank you. Well, not next week. Brother Moser will be here.